Today, we're gonna to be tying up one of my all-time favorite dry flies that works particularly well for cutthroat and brook trout. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, and grab some golden pheasant crest. We'll select a single feather, measure it to be about the size of our hook shank, and secure it to the back of the fly. Continue securing it up the hook shank, stopping just short of the hook eye. Snip your excess free, and cover up the tag ends. Next, we'll grab some peacock curl, selecting one or two fibers, securing it to our hook shank and wrapping back towards the tail. Advance your thread slightly and begin wrapping your peacock curl forward until we reach our thread, doing so in closed touching spirals. We will also be doing a giveaway for this fly, so if you'd like to win it, all you have to do is comment hashtag flies and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't win and want to give it a shot, you can pick some up on my website listed below. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and continue wrapping forward while leaving a small gap. We'll then advance the thread past the peacock curl and continue to palmer the peacock curl just as before, this time making it slightly shorter. Once complete, secure with your thread and snip the excess free. We'll also snip our thread free and switch over to a red thread. Here I'm using a flat 140 ultra thread. Secure it to your hook shank, snip the excess free and use your thread to build up a prominent base. This will be the hot spot of the fly. Once happy, we'll whip finish to secure it in place and snip the excess free. Once again, switching over to our black thread. Next, we'll grab some brown saddle hackle, select a single fiber and secure it to the head of the fly. Set it aside and if you'd like to tie the original, grab a white calf tail. However, I prefer to use this white poly yarn. We'll place the poly yarn on top of the fly and secure it tightly in place. In order to create separation by crossing over your thread in between them in a zigzag pattern and also wrapping both behind as well as in front of our poly yarn to give it some security. In the end, it should be propped up like so. Once happy, we'll grab our saddle hackle and begin to hackle it forward in closed touching spirals, wrapping it in between our poly yarn when we get there and continue doing so until you reach your thread. At which point we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then whip finish to secure everything in place and build up a prominent head. Snip your thread free and finally trimming your poly yarn to be slightly longer than your hackle. And this is the Royal Wolf. It was my favorite childhood fly that works exceptionally well as an attractor pattern for brook trout as well as cutthroat. And I'd highly encourage you to give it a shot. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. This fly pattern is my secret weapon when it comes to imitating midges. To start, we'll secure some black thread to our hook shank and grab some peacock curl. Select a single strand using your fingernails to strip off any fibers, leaving you with the quill underneath. Secure the strip quill to the hook shank and wrap well into the bend of the hook. Reverse your thread direction and finish around the hook point. We'll then grab our quill and carefully begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals towards our thread. At which point we'll secure and snip the excess free. We'll then add some UV resin over our quill. This will not only add shine, but also increase the durability of the highly delicate quill. Once happy, secure with a UV light and grab some CDC. This maroon color works exceptionally well in my waters. Secure to the top of your fly using a pinch wrap and wrap it back slightly on top of your quill. Once complete, grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a light tan. Create a sparse dubbing noodle and begin to dub your body, tightening and removing or adding material as needed once complete, brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look, being careful not to break your CDC feather. Once happy, we'll fold over our feather and secure it just behind the hook eye. Snip the excess free, folding everything back and whip finishing just behind the hook eye. And this is the smoke jumper. I like to use this pattern to imitate small midges, typically tying it behind a clink hammer or a parachute atoms. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. If you're not using this dry fly, you're missing out. To start, we'll grab some white thread, secure it to our hook shank and snap 
the excess free. Next, we'll grab some para wing. I like to use a high vis orange and secure it tightly to the top of the hook shank. We'll use this to create a post. Pulling the fibers up, use your thread to secure it as well as wrap around it in order to create our post. Doing so by starting with loose wraps, wrapping tighter and tighter as you go is gonna be your best approach. Once you've started the post, wrap back down to the base and secure it tightly. I like to make small wedges on either side of my post to ensure it doesn't spin around the hook shank. Continue extending your post slightly, wrapping back down to the base and snipping the para wing to length. We'll keep it a bit longer than necessary for our next steps. Wrap your thread well into the bend of the hook and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a March Brown color. You can find the specific dubbing I'm using in the links below. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this up the hook shank until we reach our post. Doing so in closed touching spirals and tightening or adding more material as needed. Next, we'll grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using a tan color. Select a single feather and measure it to length. Strip the tips free. Strip away some of the fibers of your feather and secure it to the hook shank, leaving a bit of extra material so we can wrap it up the post. Continue securing and snip the excess free. Wrap your thread back towards the post, lifting your feather upward and using your thread to secure it in place. With this complete, wrap to the bottom of your post and grab a different colored dubbing. I like to use a second color that complements the first and is typically a bit darker. Here I'm using a brown. Create a dubbing noodle and begin dubbing your body towards the hook eye. Once again in closed touching spirals, adding more material as necessary. Ensuring that your final thread wrap is on top of the dubbing we just placed. Grab your saddle feather and begin to hackle this around the post. Doing so in closed touching spirals until you reach your thread. If you find your hackle is a bit sparse, you can tie in two feathers. Once complete, secure in place, trying to prevent from trapping any fibers beneath, and snip the excess free. Trim your pair of posts to length, and color in your thread to match whatever body color you decide on. Snip the excess free, and clean up any trapped feathers. And this is the clink hammer. Its profile looks like an emerging insect and makes a great addition to any dry fly box. I would highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly can help you catch more fish. To start, we'll grab some olive thread and secure it to our hook shank, keeping the scraps for a later step. Continue wrapping just before the bend of the hook and reverse your thread to the hook point. We'll then grab some micro fibbits. However, here I'm using some synthetic deer hair. It makes for a versatile replacement that can be used in multiple situations. Select out three fibers and measure them to be about the length of your hook shank. Secure them carefully to the back of your fly, ensuring that you don't wrap too far into the bend of your hook. Once complete, snip your excess free and secure them tightly to the hook shank, ensuring that they don't move around. With this complete, we'll grab our strand of thread we just set to the side, string it through our hook, and use your fingers to help separate the micro fibbits. Carefully sliding your thread up the hook shank in between them to help create separation. Secure your thread in place and snip the excess free. Secure tightly, but make sure you don't wrap back on the micro fibbits. This step helps ensure that they splay out nicely like a mayfly's tail. Next, we'll grab some olive dubbing. Here I'm using a PMD color. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this up the fly, creating a smooth transition towards the hook eye. Be sure to add or tighten your dubbing as needed. Once complete, we'll lay down a thread base towards our hook eye, returning and wrapping back on top of the dubbing slightly. Next, we'll grab a CDC feather. Here I'm using a sulfur color and measure it to be about the length of our body. Secure using your thread, wrapping back towards the dubbing. There's a few ways you can tie this fly. You can do as I'm doing here, wrapping forward on our CDC, folding it back and securing it just as we've done before. This will help utilize your extra CDC and add a bit more flotation to your fly. So if you'd like to use this as a dry fly, I would highly suggest adding this extra step. However, I typically use this as an emerger behind a second dry fly and don't mind if it sinks. So I'll simply snip this excess free, which makes for a cleaner looking fly pattern. Our next step is to grab some more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, 
and begin wrapping it forward to continue our transition towards the head of the fly, having it slope down once we reach the hook eye. With this complete will whip finish to hold everything together, snip the excess free and secure in place with some UV resin. And this is the RS2. It's a highly versatile fly that I've caught fish using it as a nymph, an emerger, and even a dry fly. And I would highly suggest giving it a shot this spring. And if you'd like to win this one, be sure to comment below, hashtag flies, and I will see you in the next one. This will likely land you your first fish on a dry fly this season. To tie it, we'll start off with some small black thread and securing it to our hook shank all the way to the bend of the hook. Once we reach the bend of the hook, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly, keeping your thread buildup as smooth and uniform as possible. Once we reach the head of the fly, we'll reverse our thread slightly and grab some grizzly saddle hackle. Select a single feather measured to the size of your hook, strip a few fibers free, and use this to secure it to your hook shank. Bring your thread back up to the hook eye and begin to hackle your feather forward until you reach your thread, typically about two to three turns. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll brush all our fibers upward using our thread to help hold it in place, beginning by wrapping back on it slightly and then looping around it as you would a parachute. Continue doing so until all the fibers stand upward. Next, we'll take our thread and carefully run it through the fibers to help spread them back out as well as increase the fly's durability. Finishing with your thread just in front of our tuft. Next, we'll grab a high-vis parapost, you're using fluorescent green, and secure this just behind our hook eye. And fold the material backwards, using your thread to hold it in place. Once complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything together, snip our thread free, and cut your parapost to length. And this is the high-vis Noceum Midge. It offers an incredibly thin profile it's one of my go-to patterns when I see any midges or small flies emerging. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This pattern is probably the only dry fly that you'll ever need. We'll start off with some black Vivis thread. We'll secure our thread to the hook shank, creating a base for our next step. Snap the excess free and grab some pair wing material. Here I've selected some high-vis orange. Secure it tightly a little ways from the hook eye. Begin wrapping your thread up the pair wing material, creating a post. It's best to start this with some loose wraps, wrapping tighter and tighter as you go. We will then work our way back down to the bottom and create some thread dams, ensuring our post isn't going to spin around the hook shank. Once complete, we will wrap our thread to the back of the hook, snipping off the excess of our pair wing. Grab a brown feather, we'll select about 5 to 10 fibers, and measure them to be about the length of our hook shank. Secure them to the back of the hook, and wrap forward, further securing them up towards our post. Snip the excess free, and wrap back towards the tail. Here we'll grab some gray dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping forward towards our post, creating a transition from the tail to the post of our fly. Carefully avoiding not to trap any fibers in the process. Once complete, we will grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using grizzly as well as a brown color. Rip some fibers free, leaving an exposed stem of our feather, and tie them onto our post. We'll secure it tightly, snip the excess free, and begin wrapping both feathers towards the top of the post. Once again, taking loose wraps to begin and securing tighter and tighter as you go. Work your way back down to the base and grab some more dubbing. Here I'm gonna be using a two-tone, so I have selected black UV dubbing. Make a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this towards the hook eye. We wanna continue our transition from the back of the fly with the head being the thickest part. Grab more dubbing as needed and continue to work back towards our post. We want to finish with our thread above the body for the next step. We can then begin to hackle our two feathers, wrapping them around the post towards the base. Once happy, we'll carefully secure them, being cautious not to trap any feathers beneath our thread. Snip the excess free, 
and grab a whip finisher. Once again, we'll be careful not to trap any fibers. And this is the Parachute Atoms. If I had to choose to fish one dry fly, I would choose this one in several different colors and sizes. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is a must-have dry fly. To tie this pattern, we will use Vivas in 16 knot in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We can then grab some grizzly saddle feathers, selecting one whose fibers are a bit longer than our hook gap. Pull off some excess fibers and use that to secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping back into the bend of the hook. Once finished, we'll wrap forward, grabbing some peacock curl. We'll select about three fibers and tying them onto the head of our fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, we will return our thread to about one third down the hook shank and tie in some orange parapost. Securing it tightly and pulling both strands up in order to create a post. To do this, we will lightly wrap our thread around the base and continue to do so until the post stands up straight. Once complete, we can wrap back down to the base and take some further securing wraps to ensure our post doesn't twist around the hook shank. We'll snip it to length and wrap our thread to the head of the fly. We can now begin to wrap our peacock curl up the body. I like to twist mine into a braid and then continue to wrap it up the body. We will do so in closed touching spirals, trying to prevent any of our parapost material from being trapped underneath. However, if you do trap some, it's easily picked free. Once we reach the head of the fly, we will secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We will now begin to wrap our saddle hackle forward and we will do so in open spirals until we reach the head of our fly. At which point we can secure, taking thread wraps both in front and then pulling all the fibers back to build up a small head. With that complete, we will snip the excess free and cut our pair post to length. We will then whip finish to secure everything in place, and this is a high-vis Griffith's gnat. It is a fantastic dry fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. Speaking of fly boxes, if you would like to help support the channel, you can visit my website to purchase flies, fly boxes, or other merchandise below. Thank you all so much for the support, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's most popular dry flies, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. Start off with some olive thread, secure it to your hook shank, continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook, and as an optional step, grab some zelon. We'll secure the zelon to the back of the fly, snip the excess free, securing the excess tightly to the hook shank. With this complete, we'll advance our thread forward, snip the zelon to length, and bring our thread forward to the head of the fly. Next, we'll grab some small wire. Here I'm using green. Secure it to our hook shank and wrap back towards our tail. We'll then grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a light green. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals. Continue tightening and adding dubbing as needed, stopping with a little bit of room at the head of the fly. You can either make a flat body if you prefer. However, I like to make mine into more of a cigar shape. Next, we'll grab our wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. This will help add some durability and segmentation to our dubbing. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind your wire and helicopter the excess free. We'll then grab some elk hair. Here I'm using olive, snip away a small clump and use a dubbing brush to remove all these small insulating hairs. Insert the hair into a hair packer this will ensure that all of our hair is the same length. Tap it lightly. Once complete, carefully remove from the hair packer, measure it to length, I like mine to be a bit longer than my hook, and secure it to the top of your hook shank. An easy way to do this is to start by taking a single loose wrap around your hair, followed by a few loose securing wraps, before cranking down and tightening it in place. Once you're assured that all your fibers are secured to the top of your fly, you can continue to add pressure and secure everything in place and wrapping it in between our tag ends. 
pull all the fibers upwards and finish with your thread just behind your hook eye. Take a few wraps to push back your elk hair and whip finish to hold everything in place. We'll then grab a sharp razor and cut our tag ends away at about a 45 degree angle. And this is the X caddis, a very popular dry fly, especially if there's a lot of caddis in your waters. And as always, if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of my favorite flies to use the hopper dropper rig for brook trout. We'll start off with some flat black thread and secure that to our hook shank. Snap off the excess and continue to the back of the hook. This is going to be a thread base for our next step. We will then grab some 2mm foam. I particularly enjoy this loco foam. We will cut off a small piece a bit wider than our hook gap, trimming the ends down to give us a nice point to tie into the hook shank. Rest that on top of the hook shank with the flashy side facing down and secure tightly wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. It's important to make sure this is seated tightly so it doesn't spin around our hook when we're finished. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a ice dubbing in Peacock. We'll create a tight dubbing noodle around our thread and start to wrap that around our hook shank. We will continue this process until we reach the head of the fly. Once we've reached the head of the fly, we will fold over our foam and secure it tightly in place. You can do this by taking some loose thread wraps to start with and wrapping tighter and tighter as you go. Now trim off the excess. I like to round over the head like so and grab a small piece of fluorescent foam. You can use whatever color you want. Here in particular, I am using a fluorescent orange. Secure that to the top of the fly and trim the excess free. This is just a little hop spot to help us keep track of it on the water. Grab some silicone silly legs, tie that onto one side of our beetle and then do the same with the opposite. Now we can trim these legs to length, leaving them a little long will attract a bit more attention. Now whip finish, securing everything in place, and snip your thread free. And of course, brush out the bottom to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a bank beetle. It's one of my favorite patterns to use for a hopper dropper rig for brook trout. If you want to try this fly for yourself, but don't tie, you can visit my website down below and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be creating a dragonfly out of this foam. To start, I like to use this poor man's tube vise by taking this cap out of an adhesive bottle and securing it to the vise. Cut a quarter inch section of your blue foam and slide it over the needle. This solution isn't the best fix, but it does the trick. We'll then grab some black thread, secure it over the foam and cinch it down tightly. We'll then take several thread wraps to make a segmentation and whip finish to hold it in place. The first few whip finishes will be a little bit of a struggle to keep the foam out of the way, but you can just use your fingers to rotate it around. Seat the knot tightly and snip the excess free. We'll continue this process, creating another segmentation every quarter inch, continuing to do so until we reach the edge of our needle. Once complete, we'll slide it off the needle and if you've done it tight enough, everything should hold together nicely. Here I'm using a size 10 terrestrial hook and secure some white thread to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards the bend. Snip your excess furry and continue wrapping until you reach the hook point. We'll then grab some dubbing. I like to use this ice dubbing in Blue Dunn and begin wrapping this up the hook shank in closed touching spirals. This is gonna create a base for the next steps. We'll then add our extended tail to the back of the fly and secure it tightly with our thread. The dubbing will keep it from spinning in circles. Fold the excess backwards and secure, wrapping the thread on top of it. Add a bit more dubbing and wrap it slightly up the body. We'll fold our foam back over and secure it tightly to add another segmentation. Secure tightly and repeat the process of folding it backwards, securing and adding a bit more dubbing and dub backwards until we reach the foam. At which point we'll create the wings. Here I've selected a cool material, it's called web wings. Here we're using the molted medium done and you can use the code above to pick it up on the JStockard website for 15% off. We'll cut these out to resemble a dragonfly's wing and secure them to the top of the fly. 
We'll carefully secure each wing individually. This can be tricky and take your time to make sure that the wing is oriented in the proper position. We'll have the back ones facing out towards hook shank slightly, securing them both tightly and grabbing some more dubbing to help position them in place. Feel free to do this as many times as you'd like to make sure you're happy with their orientation. Next, we'll simply repeat this process, this time with the wings facing forward and creating another dubbing noodle to cover our thread and help position the wings, finishing just behind the hook eye. Once we're happy with our wings, we'll fold over the blue foam and secure it tightly. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free, and trim the foam in a rounded shape. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a blue damsel dragonfly. This pattern requires a lot of work, but is very fun to have in your fly box. If you'd like to win this fly and a $25 gift certificate to Jay Stockard, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.